So we are here for the Women's College Basketball Whip Around for Thursday, February 15, 2023, Part 6. So Vanderbilt is up on Texas and in a low-scoring affair. It is 47-45 here. The Texas A&M is 17-6, so Vanderbilt is 18-7. Pacific is up 77 72 over Portland. In an upset, that would be a huge upset. San Diego beat Pepperdine 62 48. Either way, that would not be an upset. That would be a huge upset if Pacific was to beat Portland, though. Even at home. Lutep is up on Western Kentucky 64 63. That would be an upset. Big upset for Western. Or for Utah. The Western shooting better overall. There's more rebounds for Utah. Yeah. Mike more second chance opportunities. Huh? For UC Riverside beat Fullerton. 66-55 is being 67-55 now. No surprise there. San Diego's up on Barber. San Barber 24-18. No surprise. I mean, I mean that's kind of a little bit surprise, but. I mean, I can't, can't be a super surprise though. And Beach, Long Beach is being Davis. 38 23. It's kind of surprising that Beach is being Davis by that much. But. And then we have Auburn did beat Kentucky 670.50. We have Evans will beat Southern Wayne 93 88 in overtime. 16 67. Number 2 is Cerro Boston College. And we have. Yeah, I'm nice to be. Do I see 64 61? 84 72. Belmont beat Northern. Norman's beat Nichols. E78. 61 New Orleans Tech beat State. 106 EA. North Carolina beat Michigan. Virginia Tech's Red Road Loop. 61 56. South Coast City beat Kansas State. 74 63. North Dakota beat Denver. 75 65. 83 73. North Coast City beat Oroz. 68 52. Texas and Corpus Christi beat Northwestern State. Turn to beat Charleston State, 758. In overtime, Utah Valley upset California Baptist. They only had three losses all year. I guess Red or Utah. More than maybe a couple of Portland teams. Could have been major important. Maybe not, mother. Mm. I mean, I mean, follow the Abilene Christian or Tim. They lost to Louisiana Tech, which is kind of a stunner. That one was. That much they got stunned by Abilene Christian, and on this one, really stings. They got stunned by Utah, by California Baptist or Utah Valley over it. And then we go to see State beat New Mexico State 73 37, Northern Carolina beat Portland State 65 50. 40 second row state blew out or not <coughs> blew out northern Arizona but upset him. Kind of a stunner that one 62 66 on the road. Idaho beat Weaver State 60 47. Santa Clara beat San Francisco 73 65. Grand Canyon beat Utah Tech 788 41. CLU beat Southern Utah. And you have 71. Bakersfield beat CSU Northridge 61 50. 59 56. East Russian Central Idaho State. And we have Stanford beat and there's still four seconds to go. But it looks like Vanderbilt is going to be took the M. Looks like Pacific is going to try to hang on over Portland. San Diego. Looks like they're going to be Pepperdine. Fullerton is going to follow the Riverside. And then San Diego taking Barbara at, in the third quarter. And UCS in Long Beach. 
let's take you to the final 10 seconds between Portland at Pacific. See if Portland can still continue the upset. Or continue the, the not upset, I guess you would say. Pacific is going to upset Portland. Against the Broncos, that should be a fun and entertaining game as the Broncos of Santa Clara are now eight and four in conference, 20 and seven on the year with their win over USF tonight. The Dons fall to seven and five and 11 and 14 overall. Here we go. Tigers get the ball inbounds. That's the first step. And then uh, Portland has to foul. It's Bogle. That's actually yeah. Off the clock, 10 seconds exactly remain here. Smith with 17 in the ball game, 9 of 10 at the line. There's the first one rim out. Six rebounds, two assists tonight. Smith's gone the whole way for the Tigers again tonight after going the distance at USF on Saturday. Both free throws are no good. How about that? In timeout, Portland. Oh, very, very unusual. 88% free throw shooter. She usually doesn't miss. Well, 9.4 seconds remain. It's a four-point ball game. Timeout Portland. They'll advance the ball and look to hit a quick. You, you don't necessarily need a three now here. It'll be interesting to see what they do. I'm sure they'll try and look for an early three, if not take it right to the basket. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they look for Gianni and Naivi and then need to look for that three-point shot. If they don't get that, they'll uh, take it to the back. You would think the Tigers give them a two here. But now, Coach Davis does not have a timeout remaining and facing full-court pressure off of the main basket with maybe four seconds left. bring Nia Lowry, the freshman, back out on the floor here. Liz Elliott, the post player, slower, a little bit of slower player off the floor. So Portland, see how they play it. Obviously, they're going to look to score quickly. And they throw it away off the inbound pass. Maisie Burnham led Kennedy Dickey too far. Dickey was a step slow on getting off of that pick in the paint. I think she got hung up away from the ball there a little bit. That didn't help matters. Uh, tough. That's a tough pass to uh, count on from that angle. So the 24th turnover by Portland is a critical one. It should seal the deal as the Tigers do get the ball in the backcourt. Anaya James now can dribble it out, but Portland does reach in and take the foul. It's Emmy Shear. And with 4.9 seconds, I think the Tigers now can breathe easier here, Celeste. Uh, and uh, what an effort tonight for the Tigers. What a great game. Just each team playing so aggressively and not giving up, you know, especially the Tigers playing aggressive, shooting those threes, talking up at their shots, not giving up. Well, big cheer here because the Tigers have hit 79 points, and uh, that means free chicken sandwiches from Chick-fil-A for everyone in attendance, including yours truly, which I'll take advantage of tonight. <laughs> and in transition, the ball game is over. From the Spano Center, the Tigers defeat the Portland Pilots 80 to 74 in an upset. Ups, yeah, that is a huge upset. Portland's five and five in conference. And 13 and 10 overall going into this. Now on a 14 and 10, up overall, Portland goes to. 17 and 9 overall. And 9 and 3 in, in West Coast Conference play. And there's a few games left here at 1 9 Eastern game. 
and two tennis streams. And again, about to beat 60 and 40 and 45. Sending up people to friend 60 and 40 and. And Pacific, yeah, like you just said, beat Portland 80 74. So let's go do the. There's two games, one that's a blow 43 23. Davis is being blown up by a Long Beach State. However, UC San Ramos, or UC San Diego and San Ramos is close, but since there's only one competitive game, and one's about, but you can pick which one you want to watch on ESPN Plus. I'm gonna show you the rest. I'm gonna show you the rest of Western Kentucky at Utah in Conference USA. Now there's only nine teams in Conference USA. Before they used to have two courts running. They used to have actually the two court system. In you know, but now they actually got away from the two courts. Just because of the fact that um, like other conferences, like some of them, like um, like FAU. I um, moved up to American, like other schools, and moved other team conferences. And the one conference you see moved up to like a better mid major, like the American. Like some moved up to the American. So, and there's a few added in, but you know, from like. Their old conference, the conference USA, a few, or um, a few were actually you no know, A Sun to conference USA, and one was was Sam Houston. Was Sam Houston like black or something? Might have been. Anyways, let's go to YouTube. That taking on was Juno Tucky at home. YouTube is the home. 66 for Western Kentucky, 78 for Utah. 40 seconds to go. On ESPN Plus. That would be also a great victory for. Now officially. And that it, means that the last time. Now officially it is. 68 for Western Kentucky, 71 for Utah. Lady Toppers. On their pink team. Utah is wearing the pink jerseys. The first season for, for, for Baker. For Baker? Okay. I think so, but. Ways. Western Kentucky needing to do what they did there. Quick two, draining only about eight seconds. Still very much in this game. 71-68. We've been treated to a gem here at the Don Haskins Center. After it looked like it was going to be a big blowout at the half, the Miners have made the game and much, much more. Three-point lead for UTEP. 32 seconds for the most part they've stayed poised on the defensive end and really heating up on the offensive end taking more three which have fallen for them and now Wilson to bring in the basketball Petrie has it they can use almost as much as this clock as they want it's tense of different and there's going to be a traveling violation wow Petrie Great defense there by the Lady Hilltoppers, forcing Petrie to get off her feet. And now we're gonna have a timeout called by Greg Collins as we take a look at the replay. One. Yeah, she kind of fell backwards. That's yeah. exactly what that is. Great defense by Josie Gilvin. And that calls the travel, and that will be the 20 turnover by the Miners in this game. Remember when we talked about it, that Western Kentucky forces normally 19.7 turnovers. Today they have 25. And that's been hurting the Miners. That's why they only hold the three point lead right now. And if Western Kentucky, you give this to Meade, 
or Faustino, one of those two players to take the three. As we take a look at the upcoming schedule for the UTEP Miners there, Miners will play a Middle Tennessee State Saturday, one o'clock right here at the Don Haskins Center. That should be a good one. For Western Kentucky, they will travel up the road and take on New Mexico State. All these games will be on ESPN Plus. 24.8 seconds left to go. Western Kentucky had a 16 point lead at the half. They're now down by three. They can tie it with a three pointer, but they don't necessarily need a three pointer. But we know they are not shy about taking threes. They've taken 22 three pointers today. Alexis Mead to Gilvin. Faustino, under 20 seconds, Faustino for three, no! The ball will go out of bounds. And it'll be UTEP basketball. With 13.5 seconds, so now the Lady Toppers have to foul right away. And I thought that was a little bit rushed by Faustino there, had plenty of clock to work with. Wilson having trouble, she gets it! Tinsayev! Hasn't gotten foul yet, they're trying to foul. Gilvin was trying to foul, but they didn't call it 8.4 seconds. No timeouts left for the Lady Hilltoppers. They're gonna have to go right away, depending on what happens. Coach Keith Adams tells the team not to commit any fouls here. Four point lead for UTEP. Yvonne Tinsaya with a tremendous game. And it is a five point lead for the UTEP Miners. 18 points for Yvonne Tinsaya. Eight seconds left to go. That is a career high for Yvonne Tinsaya points. Meet for three. No. Rebound, Aaron Wilson. And the UTEP Miners are going to win. And UTEP Miners upset Western Kentucky Hilltoppers. 73-68. And Cindy, and that is a huge one for UTEP. Texas, University of Texas, El Paso. And San Diego, Texas, and San Bernardino. I'm not sure if there's a... If... That's all. That is it for the book burn group right now. Because I'm never going to watch it. It's just a season at Sandberg right now. But there's, and there's Davis at Long Beach State, but that's not competitive right now. So... If both become competitive, I'll put that on the...